Сегодня я это самое Wi-Fi себе сделал, что ли? Сделать, да? Да, да. В, в ИСУ есть, да, там же всегда есть. Так, поэтому... Я пока, я пока смотрела, я не могу посмотреть новые на русский чай. Там картинки красивше нашла. Какие-то картинки из э, статьи, которые подписаны, что картинки это оттуда, они, они оттуда не взяты. Это в каком? Это в первой, там, в начале... В первой лекции? Да. А, может быть. Там есть чуть-чуть в исторических uh -huh, начале uh -huh. истории, там чуть-чуть ошибки. Ну, вы можете заменить на какие-то другие, вы главное опишите, что там происходит. Да, 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 да. Чтобы... Я там это подписываю, если какие-то сильно грубые, я uh -huh, тоже uh -huh. пишу, что вот я это применяла и убрала в описании к слайду. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <coughs> так, значит, мне надо сейчас открыть сайт. Мы с вами посмотрим. По сути, у меня три презентации на сегодня. Вы, наверное, тогда быстренько их про... Ну, так, опять, какие-то кусочки. У нас вот один человек, мы с ним первую разделили. Да, поэтому... Да, да, Там да, просто да. вторая, третья. Я вам про нее как раз чуть побольше mm -hmm. расскажу, потому что это наше торогерство местное, про это приятно рассказывать. И вам это самое, ну, чтобы вы знали. А вы как раз посмотрите, ну, чего еще делают в этих самых. Так. Просто, ну, мало ли какие-то происходят, что-нибудь захочет старогерца не сделать. Так, э, сейчас мне надо новый аккаунт открыть вот такой вот и перейти на диск. Старт from this. Uh -huh. Вон. Синтез. Вот. И фоллскрин. Okay, so um, today we will speak about measurement of parameters in the second laser radiations. From one side, it's, uh, these techniques could be similar to convention techniques to measurement some parameters of in the second radio, uh, of uh, laser radiation, for example. Uh, the measurement of the spectrum is approximately the same as the measurement of uh, uh, another spectral uh, radiation broadband radiation, but uh, maybe regarding the temporal uh, uh, temporal characteristics, maybe it's a bit uh, more, much more complicated. Okay, this is, uh, but first of all, uh, uh, in addition to measurement parameters, we briefly consider uh, main types of in the second laser systems. You can see that there are three uh, generation maybe uh, of in the second laser system. The first one is the Uh, dual lasers, so the second one is uh, uh, and the, the systems based on Vibroni crystals and the last one is the femtosecond lasers in fiber. And uh, after that we will consider how to measure energy, how to measure uh, uh, duration by electronic devices, maybe it's not so, uh, this device not able to measure the, uh, uh, the duration Uh, up to the tens femtoseconds, but uh, for example, street camera sometimes uh, still used in some devices. It's still used, but in our labs it's uh, uh, not applied. Usually, street cameras used in uh, uh, <coughs> uh, something like radiation uh, in uh, synchrotrons and so on. And uh, maybe two or three years ago, some uh, researchers from uh, Novosibirsk uh, arrived to here and gift us uh, some books about measurement of uh, about development of screen camera. It, uh, if I'm not mistaken, three books and these books located in this uh, uh, library. You can, if you maybe if, if some reason, if some time you are necessary to uh, going in deep 
uh, about the measurements of three camera, you can find uh, the book here. It's very nice and useful. But mm, we just consider only basic principles. Of course, uh, if the people wrote three books, uh, it's very deep topics, but uh, it's um, currently it's beyond our deep consideration. Okay, and after that we will consider after correlation measurements, uh, some kind of soft uh, correlation techniques, and finally uh, I show the spectrometer is the same spectrometer as uh, the measurement of convenient broadband uh, uh, radiation. Okay, so you can see uh, three generation, as I already mentioned, and uh, view letters in the lasers, which is uh, active media, is uh, used the uh, solution of view. Yeah, the first uh, lasers was, uh, uh, maybe the first work on this topic was uh, uh, maybe after seven years after invention of the laser, yeah. Uh, and uh, the principle is uh, uh, vibrating, oscillating singlet uh, layers. Yeah, you can see that uh, because uh, dews uh, have a lot of uh, uh, states, it uh, uh, provides a good uh, possibility to create a, a broadband, uh, uh, a, a big number of longitudinal modes, which will be uh, will be. Favorable, as we discussed in the previous uh, lecture, for the measurement uh, for the creation of locking. Yeah, and uh, so uh, uh, maybe I already mentioned that it's use uh, laminar uh, flow uh, of liquid uh, because uh, you can see here that uh, triplet uh, layers is uh, uh, have a big uh, time. Uh, of uh, living, living time, oh, yeah. Uh, so that's why it's better to replace uh, the, the views. Okay, so um, we need a uh, powerful pump, and uh, uh, to uh, focus pump uh, to the special area, uh, to the limited area to increase power density, we use a spherical. Uh, mirrors in the uh, resonator. <coughs> this is the typical uh, optical schemes of, of such uh, uh, lasers. You can see that uh, the radiation, pump radiation, is introduced by prism. In the uh, this is uh, active media. It's a jet of radamine shell six G uh, and uh, two uh, mirrors. So you can see. Some, uh, a resonator with saturable absorber, uh, which we uh, discussed, uh, use uh, passive mode, uh, create passive mode locking, so it uh, looks like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, some pictures about uh, saturable absorber. And you can see here another uh, setup, uh, approximately the same, but uh, here the pump beam uh, directly introduced uh, to this. Uh, uh, to this jet, and uh, this is a uh, uh, prism uh, stretching and compressor so to adjust uh, mode locking. You can see, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, there is another one. Uh, I forgot what is the dodge, dodge, dodge seat. It's uh, maybe additional, like the saturable absorber. But maybe I, I just thinking that it could be related with uh, some some liquids. Uh, maybe it's better to check. Okay, and uh, uh, there is a uh, there are two type of view lasers. Uh, the first one is uh, the uh, broadband form of locking. Uh, the second type of the lasers is uh, highly coherent. Uh, lasers with single longitud longitudinal modes, uh, which we uh, use for, for example, for holography. In our lab, we have uh, 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 such lasers. We didn't use it, uh, uh, but we keep it like maybe for if we will need to. Some, uh, we will decide to create uh, some uh, project. Maybe we can uh, try to. Uh, 
uh, recreates such lasers. Now it's uh, archived, maybe I can say, in our lab. So uh, in this case, uh, this dew uh, is uh, the we can select the radiation by just uh, uh, rotating the uh, uh, rotating the angle of the uh, prisms, for example, here uh, or these mirrors regarding this prism because we uh, each uh, spectral components uh, going uh, in the specific direction. So the other possibility is uh, uh, um, changing temperature or changing the concentration. It's also there is some dependence on that. So it's uh, the example how it looks like. So there is some uh, uh, so much heat media which uh, going through the laser beam, pump beam, and uh, uh, generated uh, stimulated beam. So this uh, some uh, uh, views and uh, various uh, types of the fans. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, basically it's uh, much more uh, easier, in, maybe not so easier, but at least uh, they uh, may be much more efficient, uh, laser like tensor field lasers and uh, in other uh, crystals. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, we use pump, powerful pump. We need to use uh, jet. And uh, and they are not so efficient because of the gain medium is not so um, efficient. So because of medium, because of uh, I believe that this powerful pump is a very big limitation uh -huh. because I, I know how much problem we have with that uh, laser. Uh, because the system is uh, Russian, it's uh, against the company produces in droids, but they use pump, pump lasers, uh, which is uh, also quite uh, powerful. But I, I suppose for this lasers, maybe the requirement for the pump is uh, a bit higher. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, when this uh, pump uh, uh, lasers uh, working approximately five years or maybe seven years. Uh, after that, there are a lot of problems to or replace or fix these uh, pump lasers. And I'm working here already maybe 15 years. Uh, and uh, I, I observed at least two uh, big uh, period of time when this pump laser was broken and the lasers was, uh, the laser system was not uh, uh, operated in full, uh, full power or maybe uh, last two years there was the similar problem with this pump and uh, we also are not working, uh, not performing experiments approximately one year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a uh, very uh, big problem because now you need a lot of, uh, repair a lot of documents for customs to send this uh, laser for uh, repair in another country and then uh, bring it back. And uh, my previous, uh, I teach uh, these lecturers after the first Professor Krylov, who is died in uh, maybe uh, 13 years ago. After that, uh, one year, this lecture uh, was uh, given by Andrei Gorodetsky. He was a postdoc in our lab also. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, mentioned that the aim of his uh, moving to Greece, uh, to work for Greece, because of customs. Mm -hmm. He working on the customs uh, to solve uh, this problem with pump lasers. He spent maybe uh, six months, maybe uh, four months, and I also I have a car. I, uh, I help him to deliver this uh, the him or documents to the Pulkova customs, and it was uh, really uh, disappointing thing when when you claim to work with uh, uh, in in science, but instead of that you giving the preparing the documents for bringing the lasers back and forth. So okay. if we need to <coughs> repair our, our laser, we need to deliver it to producers of it? So it depends on the layer, but finally, uh, at that time we have Finest, uh, uh, it's Finest is the trademark mm -hmm. for the lasers company, and we have maybe laser uh, type, uh, and uh, uh, this laser was not in, uh, pre prepared, uh, produced in Russia, so yes. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, 
uh, we have good femtosecond uh, solution companies and it's easy to make service sometimes uh, Anton's or their staff calls to the projects and they uh, give in by phone what you need to adjust and what to do and it's very good but uh, in case of uh, this lasers uh, maybe it's uh, we have a problem that's a pump powerful uh, lasers which are eligible to for pumping uh, is not uh, produced in Russia, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, the problem is still, I think, uh, the same. We uh, again have uh, uh, not Russian lasers. Maybe now, when uh, it uh, became uh, in the, in the next order, <laughs> much more difficult to bring a new uh, equipment from abroad, maybe we will find another uh, domestic company. Mm -hmm. But previously, it was no, it, it's considered that maybe five or seven years we, uh, this laser is working, then we need to. Uh, should be replaced with another one. Mm -hmm. So it's like that. But now, of course, I think we, we live in a, a bit new reality. Okay, so um, uh, going to the uh, uh, solid lasers, you can see a lot of uh, resonators, a uh, lot of active medium. The first, the most famous is the tensor sphere lasers, the second one is chrome lift lasers, and uh, I don't know, Alexander Witt lasers. Uh, uh, but uh, at the Avesta company, for example, you can find uh, uh, the first type, the second type. I'm not sure about this one, but maybe also. For example, this laser is useful when you would like to obtain radiation in the mid mi middle uh, infrared uh, range. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is the first experiment. Uh, links of the original paper. Uh, you can see that's uh, Niadin Yak lasers. Uh, and uh, which, uh, uh, this is a list of advantages of such lasers. So you can see that it's uh, high uh, power. Uh, it's a uh, uh, very good uh, mode uh, because it's a solid. Uh, 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 you can control the uh, distribution of the uh, transverse electromagnetic modes it's uh, directly relates uh, to the resonator mirrors and uh, high uh, sorry, how efficiency maybe yes. uh, big energy uh, it's uh, kilojoules per pulse and uh, uh, we already discussed that the most important thing that uh, the active media should support a broad uh, emission uh, at the broad uh, spectral uh, range. So uh, this spectra, broad spectral range is, uh, for example, in this media, uh, it's implemented, so it's uh, already found. Maybe it's not covers whole uh, range, uh, whole uh, uh, range of radiation what we would like to obtain, but we can use, create second harmonic, we can use parametric amplifier, and that's what, uh, by these devices, we're able to, uh, to cover the whole uh, range what we need. But uh, uh, so it's not necessary to cover all uh, uh, range uh, directly by this system. Uh, by it's like used like uh, initial radiation. After that, you can convert it by super continuum or another uh, another devices. Okay, so uh, the most uh, short uh, pulses obtained with this uh, region, maybe. Uh, of course, it was um, maybe argon uh, compressor uh, to compress, finally compress the dispersion. But uh, at least uh, this uh, the, uh, the uh, demonstration, the ultra sh so ultra short duration, is uh, uh, reflects that this uh, media is very uh, good, and uh, it's also could be coupled with optical fiber, so it could be. Yeah, the generation could be not inside the fiber, but after that you can uh, create the uh, fiber output and uh, deliver the radiation, uh, laser radiation to various uh, uh, maybe uh, position of the space, which is easier to do with optical fiber. Okay, and uh, there is another advantage, it's possible to create a wider harmonic inside the resonator directly. And uh, you can see this, uh, what uh, we already discussed, this absorption uh, spectrum. So it's, uh, uh, in this here, we, we need to pump our laser. And in this range, it will be emit the radiation. You can see that 
at the half by band uh, lines, uh, uh, half of the maximum, you can see it uh, approximately 200 nanometers. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can see the peak fluorescence is uh, near to 800 nanometers and uh, uh, some informations. And uh, uh, the, uh, if you consider this uh, uh, half maximum, uh, in frequency terms, you obtain the uh, maximum, the limited duration for this uh, section is uh, approximately 10 femtoseconds. Uh, okay, so it's a typical resonator. We can see it's uh, approximately the same. We have the uh, pump lasers uh, di uh, directed to the semi diffroid mirrors uh, like that. It focuses inside the titan sapphire resonator. And uh, additionally, here we use uh, Brewster's angles uh, uh, to reduce the uh, loss uh, uh, at the uh, edges, at the, uh, these uh, edges of the optic mirror. And uh, uh, we already discussed uh, care lens mode locking. Unfortunately, I didn't show you the slide about this, but we discussed how it's produced. So we have a diaphragm, if you're not uh, so forgotten. Yes, we have diaphragm, we have Gaussian beam focus with and because of difference be between intensity in the, in the center, in the edge of the beam, we create self-focusing and uh, condition to uh, um, amplifying or amplification the uh, um, uh, walls, uh, uh, longitudinal walls, which in phase with the others. So it's like uh, uh, avalanche process. Okay, uh, so it's uh, what about uh, titan sapphire lasers and uh, the other one. And we consider also fiber lasers. So in our lab uh, we have, uh, you can see at least uh, one laser which in uh, uh, quantum laboratory now, if I'm not mistaken, so Sylvester uh, created. And the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is directly uh, scheme, optical scheme of these lasers, uh, which is made of Vesta. Uh, the advantage is it's uh, cheap uh, because of fiber is uh, quite cheap components, it's compact. Uh, Avesta company, uh, uh, maybe previously, we have uh, these lasers, it looks like maybe, uh, you know, uh, uh, half of square meters in uh, uh, required uh, half of square meters on the optical table, but they, if you don't need the second harmonic generation, if you don't need a, uh, 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 yes, uh, the, the most uh, the big part here is uh, also second harmonic generation. If you don't need it, you can see it's like, uh, I don't know how to say in English, like millions, of, you know, not so big, like your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be uh, the same, uh, uh, approximately the same uh, parameters, maybe not so thick as mobile phone, a bit, uh, a bit uh, thick, thicker. thicker. Yeah, but, but uh, uh, in any way, it will be, will be very compact and it produces uh, radiation 100 or maybe even one, uh, one, one watt, maybe half of the watt. It depends on the uh, pumping uh, diodes. Uh, it's quite expensive maybe, but uh, usually it's, uh, it's, uh, maybe the trade-off lives in the 200 milliwatts uh, pumps. Uh, uh, it's not, not pump power, pump power is higher, but uh, 200 milliwatts is output in the second radiation. So if you consider the construction, you can see the active uh, active fiber. It's uh, usually uh, uh, such uh, lasers radiates on the wavelengths which now uh, broadly used in um, fiber transmission range. So uh, you know why we use infrared radiation in, uh, uh, in our telecommunications, for example. Because it is uh, well suited with uh, quartz uh, fibers. Uh, this uh, particular wavelength, it is a wavelength of minimum losses. Yeah, yeah. so there is a, a two windows, uh, one of uh, in 1.5 micrometers, around 1.5, and uh, another window is 1.2, if I'm not mistaken, 1.2, 1.3, yeah, something around there. So uh, there are two windows and there are, of course, uh, lasers, uh, they add some active uh, dopant components like herbium uh, to create a to for generate radiation. So there is active uh, media inside the fiber and uh, each just uh, directly uh, welding, I forgot, so it's very good. 
mm-hmm. if I not mistake, it's welded. It's welded with uh, another types of uh, 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 laser uh, fibers, and you can see that there is some isolator which uh, prevents the propagation of uh, from an, uh, in, in another direction or uh, can but maintain the polarization for some uh, reason either is necessary is necessary this is a uh, uh, decroid comp- coupler to uh, um, to add pump uh, radiation inside this fiber so it's inside volumetric break gratings uh, which reflects uh, this uh, radiation with that wavelength to that direction and uh, here they produce to create a, a emission uh, radi- stimulated emission Okay, so uh, it looks like that. Yeah, uh, there is a linear resonator, there is a circular resonator, and uh, uh, ons maybe uh, 13 years or again 13 years ago, I visited the seminar on fiber lasers, and uh, some groups from Novosibirsk discussed the uh, resonators of l- such fiber lasers could be reach. Uh, uh, thousands of kilometers because fiber is very compact you can use a lot of uh, uh, fibers mm-hmm. yes you can uh, uh, how to say uh, like katushka mm-hmm. so, um, soil it maybe on the small uh, peri- uh, small space and uh, you can use uh, this resonator the, the duration will be uh, 1000 kilometers they discussed some features but I already forgot what happened if you have a long resonator, that means that your pulse is traveling uh, during this resonator to mode locking regime, for example, mm-hmm. very long period of time. So you have uh, maybe uh, another uh, phenomenon. Usually, uh, uh, the physics consider uh, the resonators which could be like in, uh, for example, in laser pointers, um, uh, hundreds of millimeters. Uh, in the uh, big uh, Gillignon lasers, it, uh, the resonators could be one or two meters, for example, to obtain very uh, uh, one single longitudinal mode. But what happens there, I don't know. It's also probably a given path to longitudinal mode, but it's maybe not for mode locking, uh, suitable not for mode locking. They uh, not necessary. It should be femtosecond. So it's. Uh, such interesting things and uh, there are uh, a famous company which uh, originated from Russia you know maybe it's IPG uh, Photonics yes. Yes. Uh, it was originated in Pryazina in Moscow and uh, now it's controlled maybe I don't know now but when I was at the seminar they told that uh, they control uh, 90% of the fiber lasers all over the world so it's a very big uh, company now which manufacturing in China and headquarters in the USA. Okay, uh, and um, uh, what next? Uh, now we consider the uh, how to create uh, uh, mod locking and uh, femtosecond uh, pulses, how to obtain femtosecond pulses. If I'm not mistaken, I uh, every year, as I remember, I forgot the main principle, but uh, Usually I try to uh, find out how it's working. It's not, not so difficult. So there is a, a linear and nonlinear uh, change of polarization due to propagation of optical pulse. Nonlinear, that means that we, when your pulses uh, cre- have high power, uh, there is some nonlinear change of polarization direction. Yeah, That means it's the same principle as uh, Kerr's mode locking uh, mm-hmm. in the Kerr's lens. So when you have uh, powerful radiation, it's... Uh, uh, rotate the polarization so if your radiation is not powerful so it's like uh, if you you have some emission uh, inside your resonator which not in phase with the others they will not uh, change the polarization which in this direction is supported and another direction is not supported because uh, uh, after this uh, active media uh, the stay is located to polarizers so they filter it another uh, most like diaphragm and care lens. So it's uh, the principle something like that. So when you have high power, the radiation is rotated. When the power is not high, it's uh, still propagated and forward. Uh, it's uh, blocked by polarizers, something like that. Okay, uh, so uh, you can see. 
I have some uh, uh, discussion. Yeah, you can see the care uh, uh, self-focusing effect or okay, care effect. And you can see that uh, the when we have uh, uh, fiber with length is D, uh, the nonlinear refraction refractive index uh, change the delay phase phase delay according to this direction. And this delay is uh, just uh, uh, this uh, delay which uh, able to group some components in, in phase. Okay, and this is exactly the uh, optical scheme of these lasers, which, use, uh, which is still located in our laboratory. You can see there is a, a X3, if I'm not mistaken, three active diodes. At least one, two, and three, yes, uh, pump, uh, pump diode. Uh, there is a uh, control polarizing controller, which is just, uh, uh, as we discussed, it controls the polarization uh, in active media. And uh, there is a uh, air erbium uh, piece of fiber which uh, cons uh, is responsible for generation. So it's like a, mm, a seed generator or how basic generator, I think. Seed. Yeah, and after that, the radiation is uh, uh, going here. So it looks like a semi transparent mirror in the resonator. It's going in this uh, direction. You see that there is some. Uh, dispersion uh, compensating uh, fibers, which uh, this uh, uh, which compensate the dispersion during the, the propagation in other types of fiber, and uh, there is uh, two uh, diodes which uh, responsible for increasing the pump, uh, increasing the uh, radiations like amplifier. You can see there is a additional uh, active medium, and here you can see that uh, again the uh, like. Uh, Com fiber compressor and uh, f so uh, the next uh, there is uh, two types of radiation uh, in these lasers the, the, the first one is uh, 1.5 so it's the first harmonic and the finally it is possible again to obtain uh, the second harmonic in uh, this is a PPLN crystals and periodically polyp lithium nearby so it's like a uh, the crystals, which it's not so thick as we discussed previously, but it's um, there is a, a specific domains. Each domains is uh, oriented is uh, change the orientation of crystal. For example, the first domain, uh, uh, the phase uh, uh, matching, is uh, uh, ensured between one uh, uh, between red and, and blue uh, wave spectral components. Uh, after that, they uh, after reaching this thickness, they uh, becoming not not in phase, but they use uh, another domain which compensate already not from uh, with another dispersion. So here you have red and blue. Uh, for example, the blue uh, will be uh, retarded according to red one. Another domains the the, uh, the dispersion has changed their uh, sign, and uh, that is possible to. Accumulate this phenomena, this uh, second harmonic radiation in a small range. And what is important for these uh, uh, lasers is working with, uh, uh, it uh, should be heated. Uh, the uh, optimum uh, mode of this crystal is 100, 100 with how, with 50 uh, Kelvin, uh, Celsius, uh, degree of Celsius. So uh, in it is necessary to uh, heat uh, and uh, cool it uh, uh, not so sharp, so it should be heated maybe uh, 30 minutes. After that, uh, you can use a second harmonic, it will be much efficient. And you can see there is a germanium uh, prisms. It's uh, germanium have a very big refractive index, if I'm not mistaken, maybe someone knows. Uh, around four or something. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why it's a very thick prism <coughs> and uh, it's very sharp, uh, the, the directed very sharp uh, the radiation in this way. It uh, uh, looks like it's not transparent in optical range, but when you open this, uh, uh, how this is mm. When you open it, you can see that it's uh, quite uh, <laughs> not, not transparent, but when we work in this infrared radiation, it's okay. It's absolutely transparent and has very high uh, refractive index. Okay, so this is the fiber lasers, and I don't know why it's 
it's not fiber laser, but it's a thin sets which uh, of lasers which are now located in our laboratory. So it's uh, 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 another kind of uh, erbium lasers. Uh, I'm sorry, it's kalium. Yeah, it's kalium, and it produces radiation on uh, uh, one uh, one zero six. Uh, 106 micrometers, uh, so in one micrometer, and uh, 60 nanometers. And uh, this uh, resonator has uh, three meters, and uh, this is uh, time uh, traveling uh, of the photons inside the resonator is 20 nanoseconds. From here, you can calculate the uh, repetition rates of the pulse because uh, uh, you can see it's like megahertz lasers, and approximately is. Uh, uh, true from the same lasers because the uh, times of traveling uh, photons inside such resonators is also uh, in the order of nanoseconds. It's di much di more uh, different from titan sapphire lasers, which is uh, in uh, um, basic oscillator of titan sapphire lasers. Uh, it, it is also uh, the time traveling of nanoseconds, uh, around nanoseconds, and uh, uh, but when you have amplifier, they selected not uh, only uh, amplifier working in kilohertz mode. So uh, in uh, basic oscillator, you obtain the energy of pump, uh, sorry, pulse energies approximately uh, nanojoules. Yes, uh, the duration is nanojoules. Uh, but when you uh, use amplifier in titan sapphire laser, you obtain millijoules. Millijoules mm -hmm. is very big. So you have repetition rate maybe one kilohertz, and in this one kilohertz you obtain uh, the pu each pulse contains millijoules. So finally, the uh, the flow radiation could be uh, one watt, uh, or maybe two or three watts. Yeah, but uh, here you have one kilohertz, and here also in this laser which is in our lab, the uh, radiation is could be again. The, the general power is uh, one watt or maybe one this half watt, but uh, the energy of the pulses is uh, because of megahertz repetition rates, uh, tens of megahertz. It's uh, uh, it's uh, nanowatt, uh, nanojoule per mm -hmm. nanojoule. So so when you would like to create some uh, uh, nonlinear opticals, uh, nonlinear optical effects, and the titan sapphire system this uh, this uh, Amplifier, you can you no need to focus at your radiation. You just put your uh, watt, uh, uh, this general power of watt, but millijoule uh, per square centimeter. But when you would like to obtain a nonlinear phenomena here in our lab, we need to use uh, focusing lens to collect uh, uh, our uh, 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 whole beam to small points, and inside we e able to recreate the same. Um, power density, as in this uh, system in, uh, in our resonator. It depends, uh, it's uh, produced some various uh, differences, uh, and, uh, of, but uh, of, uh, these lasers uh, they have a bit different uh, applications. Titan sapphire laser is for uh, broad experiments, which, which is, for example, plasma fermentation, supercontinuum generation, but in these lasers, we produce very weak terahertz radiation. We amplify it in the constant magnetic fields, but it's like a terahertz spectrometer and so on. Okay, this is a comparison uh, of uh, these um, lasers. You can see pros and cons of uh, both lasers. You can see that uh, it's uh, expensive, difficult to use uh, for dye laser, and it's unstable because of this jet and uh, the pulse duration of the uh, short and uh, the efficiency of generation and, but uh, which is better is provided the broad changing the view uh, inside the resonator you able to select the wavelengths in broad range it's uh, one advantage of such uh, uh, lasers but because of another disadvantage it is uh, become uh, absolutely not represented at current lab Okay, and the radiation quality also uh, contained in this, uh, according to this uh, two types of beams, it's much better. 
Okay, is the question for you? Maybe we will skip it for the uh, your uh, practical part. Yeah. What about gaze lasers? They do, uh, are not used to pulse generation. Uh, I suppose I, I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, have a big experience in chemistry and so on. But I suppose that it's uh, uh, it's. Um, it's uh, related to the uh, number of uh, transitions, number mm -hmm. of uh, energy layers. I suppose that in gas uh, uh, media, it's not uh, a lot of uh, this uh, transitions. Transition, yeah. But I'm not expert. Mm -hmm. That's my assumption, maybe. Mm -hmm. So I I don't hear nothing about it. Uh, usually, maybe uh, a bit nanoseconds, yes, uh, regarding the picoseconds. Even I don't think it's not. So a lot of such uh, because maybe you need to apply some uh, ex uh, external fields to obtain this uh, uh, mm -hmm. so because Yeah, they used as the uh, argon uh, laser, it was uh, one of the mm -hmm. pump later mm -hmm. for our uh, defense affair system, but it's not uh, uh, produced a lot, a lot of uh, MOS, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so that's why it's not used in chemical yeah, And now fiber lasers are the most popular. So it's not most popular, it's not, it's not, they're not able to replace defense affair laser system with amplifier, but for around, uh, for more multiple applications like uh, uh, laser processing and so on they uh, apply it a lot mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's why this uh, company ipg photonic group produces it for put it for laser processing for manufacturing for i don't know uh, when you need to create an optical micro scheme they use some laser radiation somewhere mm -hmm. uh, somehow <laughs> so uh, we have additional uh, uh, presentation i have additional presentation about application but and we have a, you know, uh, the, how to say, the group of uh, Professor Weika, Weika, uh, 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 Institute of Laser Physics, mm -hmm. or uh, ELT, yeah, something like that. So uh, they use a lot of such lasers, so you can the second, you can go to the excursion. Now they located on the Griffsova, but soon they will be moved to the the Shiva line and be the, you know, the neighbor for them, we can go and discuss. So for example, I submitted a project with them uh, for laser processing and application our technique for monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. So we now we it's posi position is like we a uh, big mega faculty, we don't have a uh, edges between uh, uh, the various groups and scientific institutes, so we're able to uh, joint research work, communicate each student probably uh, uh, will have possibility to have a practice in another laboratory to going to take some courses even so it's like individual trajectory of each student if mm -hmm. you're interested about that you can do it uh, for example my students uh, uh, come to another educational program of course uh, our head of our educational problem not so happy because uh, 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 it's better it will be exchanged if someone will come to mm -hmm. our educational problem but this time uh, she come to the uh, faculty of uh, physics and uh, studied here but I we still working on research uh, so it's uh, uh, there is uh, such possibility of course it may be better to come to our educational problems <laughs> I should say okay so but, but in principle we have a lot of uh, possibilities mm -hmm. to study these things but I just not have enough time to, to know everything but it's uh, represented at our university. If you have more time you can come and uh, be curious what happened there. Okay, so we consider the first uh, question, so the second question, how to measure the parameters. It's quite simpler and if I'm not mistaken previously you have laboratory work from that I'm, I'm not familiar uh, what happened now because a lot of uh, uh, teachers practice changes during this uh, uh, 13 years what I uh, I have uh, maybe 13 maybe 10 or 11 years I, I responsible for this course so uh, 
Now I don't know if it was Yashin or who is uh, should teach laboratory works on Igor. Igor. Ah, maybe they will not. Uh, they will. They show you how to measure the power energy of uh, the second laser. We don't know. The first work was uh, we measured. Yeah. Second thermal generation, yeah. But uh, we will have uh, other work with him, and uh, maybe it will be connected with how to color correlate. I, I think previously it was about correlator, and uh, is, uh, there is another work at the first uh, generation, Terahertz properties. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how, how many of such. Uh, mm, uh, such uh, labs, but uh, they varied it uh, somehow. Okay, so uh, we discuss uh, the measurement of energy. You can see that there is a peak uh, mean and uh, uh, for period over the pulse. It uh, depends on various equations for that. It's joule, watt, measured in joule and watts. And there is peak power mm, and uh, yeah, I already explained this uh, example. I, I think you remember it. Yes, that uh, in the femtosecond lasers we have the same uh, power as in maybe whole country. But in the difference in that that in femtosecond is peak power. After that, there is an iter ascension. Yeah, mm -hmm. and but uh, in uh, but in uh, any. Uh, uh, I, uh, IS, for example, uh, atomic uh, energy station, they uh, use, uh, they are obtain in each femtosecond such power they mm -hmm. produce. So the difference in that, but if regarding the peak power, we, we have the same uh, electronic density and so on, so it's very, very uh, interesting and uh, apply a lot of possibility to uh, study the phenomena, optical phenomena and so on. Yeah, interaction of laser interaction with the uh, media. Okay, uh, two equation which is important for focus uh, your radiation inside the, uh, for example, small spot to obtain femtosecond, uh, to obtain femtosecond, uh, sorry, supercontinuum radiation or obtain nonlinear phenomena, estimate the density. You can see that the, uh, when you focus your radiation, you increase the density, that means that uh, you to obtain uh, supercontinuum generation, you need to obtain uh, the densities uh, like that. And uh, there is uh, also uh, so, uh, uh, radiative resistance of materials each uh, within this uh, frequency, this um, de densities range. So sometimes that's why it's we discuss it the stretching and compressor mm -hmm. so important. Okay, so uh, if you speak about densities, let's uh, speak how we can measure the um, uh, power of femtosecond uh, radiation. It's uh, everything is uh, simple here. So there is three types of uh, detectors. The first one is a heroelectric detector and photodiodes and the third tools in the uh, thermal heads, which is uh, mm, like uh, working on volumetric principle. Let's consider how they use or how they use. And then finally, you need uh, some more uh, special device, the display, or it now be could be connected to the computer and you know, measure and uh, accumulate it to your embedding uh, systems, which uh, uh, collect signals and even pro can process it. Okay, so uh, there is uh, parameters uh, on which you need to, to take into account. So uh, this means that uh, some uh, of the sorts, uh, for example, uh, photodiodes, you can try to measure uh, uh, like silicon photo. You, you uh, can try to use silicon photodiodes to measure the uh, um, to measure the energy of uh, uh, fiber erbium lasers. Could you tell me what happened? 
uh, I think uh, it is uh, uh, for Tom peak uh, I don't know uh, hit electron uh, then one electron hit another electron uh, and uh, so in that we have a lot of electrons uh, which detect uh, it's uh, it's uh, you, you can try to explain the extrinsic principle but I asking you if you take uh, ah. silicon uh, photo detector mm -hmm. and apply to a turbine lasers what happens Uh, with around uh, uh, one one point five one point five and silicon not sensitive within the sensitivity uh, range of uh, the uh, uh, silicon detector you need to be a germanium detector uh, so so you need to match your uh, your measurement system with parameters of later radiation mm -hmm. because uh, first the first important parameter is wavelength another one is uh, uh, energy uh, because uh, for example these photodiodes is very sensitive mm -hmm. they are able to use uh, maybe microwatts even sometimes and some of them could use nanowatts and less is even there is a photon counter and so on it's also uh, based on the similar technology yeah? but they unable to operate this uh, radiation higher than maybe uh, two hundreds maybe two tenths of uh, milliwatts but uh, the, on this uh, you can see here there is a specific filter which is uh, could be just simple to shift it and cover the detector area and they reduce and three order of magnitude your uh, sensitivity of your detector so you when you are um, uh, um, mention in your measurement device that your fi filter is on uh, they will be show uh, reduce the radiation of three order of magnitude so and you will able to work maybe with hundreds of uh, milliwatts and mi even in one watt but I recommend uh, if you would like to measure one watt uh, to use thermal heads because they say it's uh, on the volumetric principle we just will consider it it's not damage it uh, uh, but it's more uh, have a more inertia. Uh, so uh, it's uh, important uh, observation if you would like to work in laboratory, you need to know it because uh, uh, when you come, you can damage the equipment. We have a lot of uh, damages which is made by students. Uh, at least not forget that uh, one watt is sometimes it's. Uh, very uh, good absorption in the black one, so we have a, a how to say, private uh, melt. Well, we, I think yeah, something like a weld again. We, we can weld, uh, we have some uh, uh, welded uh, heads which is um, the which uh, body is damaged by uh, laser radiation, and now we are unable to sh uh, shift uh, these filters because it's blocked and wedged. Like that because when you work in this high power for radiation, first of all, as eye safety, you don't need to use like uh, rings and so on. Uh, how to say? Uh, clocks, clocks, yes. Yeah, uh, because of uh, some risk of uh, eye damages. And after that, you need to take into account the, the radiation very high power, so you don't need to uh, block on the beam, put on the beam something like screw. Uh, uh, yeah. so it's like it's During the experiment, we use special cuts to <laughs> see our radiation, and one moment it uh, became to burn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also the problem is uh, really when you're working with uh, focusing radiation, you will damage this card, so you, you need to uh, match, uh, maybe use another. There is a card that's very sensitive, but there is a special tablets which mm -hmm. produce yellow radiation, yeah, yeah. So yellow luminescence, and, and so something like that. So yeah, there, there is a problem. And um, you can see that energy, spectral sensitivity, we just discussed frequency sensitivity. Frequency sensitivity is important for P-electric uh, detectors because they, they are unable to use constant uh, radiation. They, the P-electric effect is uh, when you change something and the electric effect happens, so you need to modulate your radiation to obtain a 
like uh, pulse to pulse, and we, in this case, you were able to measure it. And uh, yes, this is um, edge sensitivity. So, uh, for example, this thermal has not able to use for microwaves. Uh, maybe able to use, but uh, it's uh, take a lot of uh, noise signal mm -hmm. from the cover. I, I have a story for that. Usually, I I explaining. Let's go uh, step by step from this touch, and maybe I will explain it. Okay, so uh, I think you know everything, how it works, PM uh, uh, junction and uh, photodiodes. Uh, it's, uh, there is various uh, types of uh, connection of your diodes. It's uh, uh, photodiode motor or photogalvanic mode, so it depends on the, how you connect it. Uh, and uh, uh, so here I think approximately simple. Uh, Yes, linear, which is important because you know uh, when you try to, you can use something, uh, 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 you know, uh, you can uh, invent uh, another types of uh, detector if you calibrate, if you have some process, you can calibrate if the process is repeated, you can use it to calibrate your power measurement, for example. But you need a uh, usually it's very easier to work when your uh, detector is linear. Uh, previously, I, I know some students have a laboratory work about laser diodes, they use some linear, non-linear uh, emission. Uh, so the same is uh, uh, valid for the diodes, so there is a linear part where you can work easily, there is a saturation part, and uh, so um, uh, okay, let's go to the next type. It's uh, pyroelectric. You can see that pyroelectric is uh, when you apply it, uh, 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 observe ele electricity on the surface of some crystallic pyroelectrics uh, when you uh, um, uh, add temperature on them or uh, cool them. So, uh, laser radiation hit the uh, surface of the, this crystal layer, and uh, in this case, we obtain the uh, electrical signal which you can measure and uh, this process uh, more more heat more signal so linear process uh, you can see the time of response is one milliseconds so you can able to measure laser pulses uh, after the amplifier which is worth uh, less than one kilohertz if it's uh, you have mi megahertz laser you are unable to measure such pulses but you can use chopper Mm -hmm. and uh, modulate it and measure it, so it's also good. Okay, uh, the pyroelectric, uh, oh, it's the main principle, yeah, it's uh, a bit shifted. Uh, previously I have the curve, it's, I think it's important to show a curve here, uh, because pyroelectric uh, detectors very have a very broad, uh, uh, broad uh, spectral range where they can work. They even able to work in terahertz radiation, so we have a matrix detector for terahertz uh, radiation in our lab. It is uh, based on the pyroelectric uh, detector. So we, we work with that. It's not so sensitive uh, for our uh, terahertz uh, generator, but uh, when if we focus terahertz radiation on this detector, uh, at least we can able to signal. When you s put some obje object on the way, you obtain also uh, good sensitivity. Uh, but uh, it's rather to continuous wave terahertz radiation, but nevertheless we can work it in different ways with it. Okay, um, uh, the next uh, thing is uh, thermal detector. You know it's uh, a thermal pair, yeah, maybe. It's uh, based on thermal ABS, which is uh, discovered by the deck. You know, it's uh, effect the deck when mm -hmm. he uh, use uh, uh, two metals uh, and uh, uh, heat uh, the edges and obtain the, uh, because of uh, various uh, conductivity, he, he obtain uh, the signal at the, at the uh, electrical signal. Okay, so it's uh, metals, uh, it's much better as uh, semiconductors, if you replace one metal by semiconductors. And bolometers, in the main principle, it's the uh, way you working with temperature temperature resistance, so you can see that uh, there is a curve like that, and uh, yeah, oh, even this is the construction of bolometers, 
Okay, well, what happens, Balanj? It's like a hole when you uh, put your radiation and there is some uh, uh, some additional things to cover external uh, uh, heat from the other ways, yeah? And uh, you need, to, uh, there is, uh, for example, when you need to receive, uh, uh, to work with that, you, you, you don't need, uh, you need to, to uh, when you work with ballometers, you need to uh, pay attention on your, for example, hands, because it's uh, sensitive to your te thermal uh, radiation. And, for example, one, one day I tried to, uh, uh, to focus my uh, femtosecond radiation to microscopic fiber to uh, to uh, generate supercontinuum, but fiber was also broken. I don't know about it. And I tried to focus it uh, somehow, maybe half an hour, and the, it was in the near lab in 107 auditory. Uh, we have a laboratory there at this time, and uh, in the near uh, room 106 uh, was uh, the meeting of Professor Kozlov, Professor Despalov, and some uh, maybe I don't know some colleagues come from another place and uh, they close the door and uh, discussing maybe two t two hours and so on uh, and they close the door but after that they open the door and uh, I found that uh, I, I just was confused that I finally obtained the signal because my barometer was uh, uh, directed to this door. It was maybe four meters between them, uh, between my barometers and this door. But they, he, they uh, sitting in a closet room mm -hmm. and increase, uh, discussing a lot, very intensively. Maybe they defend reports and so on, I don't know. And the temperature was increased, maybe several uh, uh, degrees. And uh, when they, they open the door, the, uh, the heat, come from this room, and uh, I, I observed really increasing the uh, signal on the my barometer. After that, uh, you, uh, with some period, some lessons, I take these uh, hats and uh, give uh, to students the questions. Uh, in the first measurement was auditory when the student just listening, the temperature is low. After that, I give you uh, the task, and the students start to think, and uh, really, I observe the, the signal on the this barometer. Mm. It's uh, like rather, uh, rather close to noise, but nevertheless, it's possible to measure. And uh, we, uh, in, in one uh, year, we even have uh, questions. Uh, we measure the, uh, we, we make measurements of the uh, heating from the uh, specific uh, surface of the head. Mm -hmm. and the task was the integrate of uh, the full surface of the head and obtain how much energy it uh, irradiates. And uh, we discussed, when I was a student, I had the same question from another teacher, and uh, he gave me that uh, uh, the head irradiates uh, 60 watts, 60. So it's, uh, if, you, uh, if you shift it in the, to the points, it will be lightened. Like, wait, wait, wait. Uh, but maybe we measure it, it was much less, but maybe students think less <laughs> this period of time. I don't know. You can repeat it. Okay, uh, so uh, I think it's all or not. It's all for this question, and we're going to the another question to measurement the duration. Sorry, can I ask you about the power range which we can measure with the pyroelectric? Power range? Yeah. Uh, it's quite sensitive because I know teragers is not so sensitive. Teragers radiation not so have a not so high power, and uh, I can say regarding uh, we usually we don't use it to apply to measure femtosecond radiation because it's much easier to work with photodiodes. Uh, so we use it only for terahertz region. But you can go to cheap D for any shop of electronics and try to buy it. It's uh, not so expensive, maybe uh, 100 rubles. You can buy this detector and. Uh, 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 unit calibrated and to work. And one student had this one of the projects, and I, I already not remember about it or what it was this project, but he tried to work with this detector. And uh, the sensitivity, I don't know in the visible range and in near infrared, but in terahertz frequency range, we, where it's uh, most often used now, uh, the sensitivity is micro. 
microvascular centimeters maybe. Yeah, and saturation? Saturation? I don't know. In integrated frequency ratio, it's okay. quite difficult to saturate it. Only if you go to the Novotir Birsk on the free electron lasers, where they, bur uh, they bur burn a uh, piece of paper in this radiation. So uh, we don't think about it, about saturation. Uh, you can use filters in any way. You can uh, add some uh, filters, polarizing filters, and so on, uh, to reduce the signal. You can calibrate uh, how much uh, optical filters you put and uh, reduce the signal. So it's not so big problem. Usually the problem is obtaining the minimal sensitivity. But the photodiodes, it's a problem because because of uh, students think, oh, it's uh, able to measure everything and try to put in a very high powerful beam. But usually if you uh, working with uh, your head, so it's no problem. Okay. Don't forget that. Uh, okay. Uh, for example, if you take this question, you can add this information because uh, the question is right. I, I believe in previous, uh, I have some slides on, on that. I will not try to search it right now, but we have some information. But maybe if uh, some students decide that it's not important because uh, we have a long of uh, a lot of material, so we need to select the most uh, appropriate one. Okay, um, so it's a summary, which I think it just discuss it. Uh, yeah, energy motion, uh, power, uh, duration, spectra. Okay, uh, and let's speak about this. Uh, it's uh, time, uh, measurement of time, uh, duration, so uh, this w w again we will start as in the first lecture we will start from the uh, oldest uh, and maybe less uh, useful devices to the mod uh, modern one and uh, the best uh, which is suitable from femtosecond one. The first things you can see is the uh, camera from stereo. Uh, I don't know, pretty stark. Uh, there is uh, things w when you uh, able to transfer uh, time domain to the angular domain using the uh, angular uh, reverse, I don't know how to say it. When, when you rotate your mirror, if you have a stereo uh, pulse train, uh, your pulse train during the rotation of the mirror could be your, each position of the pulse could be uh, redistributed on the various of time. It was uh, many years ago uh, and uh, here they used a film inside, so they put film, uh, irradiate this uh, uh, device, and after that they take out film, going to the uh, chemical processing, and uh, after, after that they able, uh, the know the knowing the radius, they able to measure the, mm, the duration between two pulses, for example, which you're not able to, because uh, you can calculate the rotation period of the uh, the highest rotation is uh, uh, implemented in hard drive, uh, so it's uh, even not so not so fast. So it's uh, um, not for uh, ultra short pulses. Okay, uh, but uh, much more uh, useful thing is a street camera, and this is the main principles. So there is a, a first uh, important uh, part. It's a photo. Uh, it's a um, uh, screen which is uh, pre convert uh, photons uh, to the electron beams so uh, it's like uh, luminescence or how, how, how to say it uh, this is a screen which converts uh, uh, photons to electrons and electron beams after that uh, uh, going in that direction and you see that there is uh, time variant high voltage. So uh, the voltage uh, deflects the electrons and uh, uh, it's, for example, if your voltage appears, uh, the, the first electrons will be reflected in one way, uh, the electron and the edge of the pulse will be uh, reflected to another way. So the principle uh, like that is similar, but instead of uh, mechanical uh, rotation, you convert it to the electrical conversion. Yeah, you can see that Hamamatsu Street Camera is time resolution 200 femtoseconds, and maybe 
eight years ago, when I just uh, first time prepared to this lecture, I wrote to manufacturer or maybe the company who distributes this uh, such street camera. I was very uh, familiar, uh, curious uh, how much cost such camera. It happens the answers was uh, disappoint me a lot. He at this at that period of time, it was ten years ago. The cost, the price was approximately. To, uh, 10 million uh, rubles. Now it's maybe, I don't know, <laughs> 30 million rubles. So it's very, very expensive things. It's uh, even much more expensive than 10 per seconds, uh, this 10 per second system. So I, I believe there is a very some modifications and uh, the researchers who working with that is uh, maybe know much more about it. But uh, uh, in fact that such devices is applied, for example, in synchrotron radiation. You know the synchrotron uh, source could be, uh, the cost of synchrotron source is uh, many, many orders of magnitude higher, so the street camera is also could be very expensive to measure it. But finally, there is a much cheaper solution, uh, so uh, which is able to, uh, easier to measure. So uh, the main uh, things is measure, is using to autocorrelators, and now we discuss it. So autocorrelation function, there is uh, autocorrelation fun function of per first order and the second order. Usually first order is not used because it's not uh, precise. And uh, usually in autocorrelator they use uh, the autocorrelation function of the second order. So but uh, the principle may be easier to start to understand from the first order autocorrelation function. We divide pulse onto two. <coughs> The first pulse is going uh, straight, the second one is delayed, you can see it's like that, but I, I believe here should be tau instead of t. And you measure interference and plot of the correlation function, so it's a uh, definition of the uh, correlation function, it's like that. And uh, uh, taking, uh, considering this um, um, uh, duration of the correlation function, you will be able to uh, estimate the uh, the time of interaction of these two functions uh, between the first pulse and the second one and estimate the initial duration. So it's easier to think. Uh, you can see that uh, from here you can obtain uh, E of the uh, dependence. It's how it looks like. It's equal interferometer. You move the delay line and obtain uh, something like envelope of this uh, pulse and you, you're able to measure the how wide of this uh, first order of the correlation function of t 10 per second you can see that in 10 per second mode you can convert uh, delta z to delta tau easier and the after correlation function of second order in the squared and uh, it's uh, used uh, some processes like two photon absorption and second harmonic generation. Our devices use second harmonic generation and there is uh, optical schemes, uh, there is collinear second harmonic generation scheme and on collinear, you know about phase matching already, yeah? so it's uh, uh, about it. <coughs> and previously we have laboratory work, uh, how to measure this duration, I, I, I think we can skip it if you will have laboratory work it's, you will be familiar if you not you, you can uh, uh, add some details in your uh, in your talk okay and here uh, non-collinear non, non generation of second harmonic two pulses across it and when two pulses overlap it in this case uh, you need to obtain equal uh, path length yes and when two pulses overlap, they create a second harmonic which radiates in straight direction <coughs> and measure this uh, uh, radius of these uh, beams uh, which uh, the uh, reflects to the um, radius of the uh, overlapping of two pulses in such crystal. So you easier to recalculate the uh, half wide of this uh, signal to the uh, half wide of duration of your pulses. So it's quite precise things, it's able to measure uh, the duration till the 10 femtoseconds even, so it's uh, very useful to uh, work with these uh, devices. So it's um, uh, what I would like to say about correlation. And finally, 
uh, we will consider spectral measurements. Uh, here the principle is the same. There are two principles, uh, a different approach to uh, measuring the spectrum. The first one is the dispersive elements like prism, diffraction grating, and so on. And the second one is the Fourier transform spectrometer. Uh, do you know what is it? Yes. Uh, uh, all of you, maybe me, yeah. I, I, I can give you some. Uh, ju ju some just reason. repeat. Yes. Yeah, you know. Okay, uh, yeah, it just two words, how it's working. You, it looks like that. Like that. You have a signal, you, uh, if uh, you have co a coherent signal, uh, even a short coherent signal, you uh, have two mirrors uh, in your Michelson interferometer, or it's another, could be another interferometer. You change the delay line, obtain the envelope. After that, you perform Fourier transform of this signal, and because Fourier transform is, uh, uh, it's not important right now, because of Fourier transform, you, uh, this is a temporal coordinate, you convert it to the spectral coordinate. And uh, if you have uh, one sinusoidal function, monochromatic uh, signal, here you will mention very sharp interference, yeah, because uh, and Fourier spectrum will give you monochromatic lines. If you uh, have, uh, ah, again, sorry, in, in frequent, in temporal domain, you will observe a big coherence, so the signal will be very broad. And when you perform Fourier transform from this broad signal, you obtain a sharp line, monochromatic uh, wavelength. If you will add ad additional components, your interference will be decreased because of uh, it will be the same as we discussed in mode locking. Yeah, some components will be in phase, some of out of phase, and uh, uh, the uh, interference in the temporal domain will be decreased. But when you take Fourier transform, you obtain the broader spectrum. So it's uh, like uh, just main principle. It's much more uh, high uh, sensitive because here you reflect your uh, light over the various angles. And you measure, each detector measure only one spectral component. But in, the sp in uh, Fourier transform spectrometer, uh, there is special term for that. It's if I'm not mistaken, it's advantage Jackie Noor, maybe Jackie Noor advantage. Yes, it's, uh, I, I'm not, uh, <laughs> remember the difference between them, but it's like... The sure, sure that's Fourier. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's Fourier, but I mean the, there is maybe some difference, but they compare it, if you compare it uh, uh, with uh, this uh, Fourier uh, spectrometer, maybe, Jacquino is compared for one type, uh, project for another type, and it's uh, uh, described the sensitivity increasing compares in comparison with uh, uh, dispersive elements. Because this means that you will able to uh, collect so weak signal and uh, use, obtain the spectrum and measure it even for weak signal. But uh, in such spectrometer, you will able to work only with type high powerful signal. No high power, but not so high, but maybe it's not difficult to work with microwatts of uh, broadband radiation and, uh, and disperse it uh, to various channels. Okay, this is various mm -hmm. schemes uh, of uh, Fourier spectrometers, <laughs> and this is uh, again what I mixed uh, uh, for spectral measurement. <laughs> it's like principal Fourier transport spectrometer. We even have the images for that. Okay. Uh, so that's all. I think some questions for you, maybe. Uh, I think we can make a break. Yeah, mm -hmm. twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, great. Okay. <coughs> One of the